All right, hey guys, so some of you pointed out in lab we haven't really covered what a chi-squared test is. So we're just gonna, in this video, cover how to visualize chi-squared data in JMP, uh, which basically amounts to visualizing categorical data and then running a chi-squared test on that data. Uh, so here I have pulled up the algal community survey so I'm just going to import this into JMP. I'll copy it, make a new data table, hide that, paste with column names. So from here, there's a few things we just want to check. Um, so our site right now is continuous data, uh, which these refer to actual locations. So we just want to make this into something that's like ordinal or nominal, and our dates are continuous, so I'm going to set these to be ordinal. Um, and that'll just save us some trouble down the line. And we can leave counts as it is because that's telling us how many bacteria or algae are present. Okay, so from here we can start making visuals. So the easiest visual for this would probably be to make a pie chart. So we'll open Graph Builder. Uh, we're going to make basically a four-dimensional pie chart, you know, 4D chess. So our count is going to be our y-axis, our taxa is going to be our x-axis. So right now, this is just a single pie chart looking at everything, all the sites. We want to break it out by date and by site. And that's what these group x and y are useful for. So we can group by site, we can group by y, and now we see you know, sites 1, 2, and 3 in this week had this distribution, and in this week they had this distribution. Um, so that's one way of making this pie chart. Uh, if you want to make a stacked bar graph, it gets a little trickier. Uh, some of you may have played with this in here and tried to do it by like doing taxa and counts with your bar chart. Now you'd think if you hit the stack button, it would do something, but it doesn't. Um, Visually, we could do something like this where we color it, uh, but this is very misleading because now we have counts here and we really want this to be percent of our total, but when we do that, it treats all of these as separate, making all of these one. Uh, so we actually have to go into our original data here and change it to a format that it can use. So when you make a stacked bar chart, you're literally stacking variables on top of each other, which means each of these taxa needs its own column. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna open tables, we're gonna go to split, because we want to split this taxa column into multiple columns. So we're gonna split our counts by taxa uh, and we're gonna group them by site and date. So when we do that, now we can see here we have site one for dates one and two, site two for dates one and two and all that. And now we have each of these uh, taxa, taxons getting their own column here. So we could go through and stack these as is. We'll see what happens when we do that. So we'll just pick up these, slap them on our y-axis, make some bar graph here. We'll uh, do percent total. Again, this doesn't work, but... These are split, so we can just stack them, uh, and we can split them into site and date. Now again, these are not normalized, and when we normalize them, it treats these all separately. Um, so we're going to bypass this and just normalize it ourselves, uh, which is to say we want to make these, instead of being absolute counts, we're going to make them percentages, and that way this axis will be the same for all of them. All right, so the easiest way to do that is just ask ourselves, if I want to calculate the percent of this Bacillia loreophyci, um, I would add up everything at that site and then divide this number by that. So we can either do that in Excel or we can do it here. Uh, I'm going to make a formula column just to show this. So we want to do this divided by this plus this plus this plus this plus that. Uh, and we're just going to copy that. 
Bam. And that'll be our Basilariophysiae. We're going to pray we spelled that correctly. Great, okay. And then we do that a few more times. Uh, I'm just going to pause and pick up when that's done. All right, so made these five columns. Each of these columns is basically what percentage of the row is in that column. Uh, now we can do the same thing. We can make this bar chart. So we put those there. We set it to bar mode. We stack it, and then we're going to split it into uh, date and site. So you can put it on either of these axes. Um, I kind of like it down here. It just depends on the question you're asking. So now we can see with a stacked bar chart how these change over time. They're normalized, so they're all the same height. Uh, and we don't have to worry about any weirdness going on here. So it definitely looks like between weeks one and week two, there's a major redistribution of the organisms that were present. Uh, okay, so bar chart, pie chart. Lastly, we have the chi-squared test. Uh, so we need to go back to our analyzed at y by x. We can use our original data set here and our response. So what we're counting, we count the organisms, we're going to put taxa here. We want to know the x factor. So how are these split? We'll split them by site. Uh, we're going to use frequency. So frequency tells us how many times the y factor happened. So this will be our count. Uh, and we're going to split it by date. So now we should get two different charts looking at each date. Uh, and so the mosaic plot is the exact same thing as your bar chart that we just made over here. So notice that this is that, this middle one's that, this third one's that. Uh, this is for April 8th. Again, we can look at April 24th, bada bing. Uh, so that's all a mosaic plot is. The contingency table takes this information and puts it into a table format. Uh, it calculates a bunch of other stuff that's not shown, but it basically tells you what percent of row or column or overall each category and site represents. Uh, but down here is where we get the chi-square test, uh, and this is the information that we want to focus on. So we care about this Pearson test here, which is the uh, Pearson chi-square, that's the most common one. Uh, the null hypothesis for a chi-square test is that your table values on one row are independent from the columns of another row. So in this case, if we were to accept the null hypothesis, we would say that there's no difference here. It doesn't matter where you go, you always see the same thing. Uh, if it is significant, we can reject that and we can say, okay, there's some relationship going on here, which is saying that between sites within a day, because of how this was grouped, we saw a change. Uh, and that's all we want to take away from this. This doesn't tell us which site. Um, so, like looking at this, it's tempting to say, okay, well, all three of these sites appear to be independent, uh, but that would require a, a post hoc test, uh, which is actually beyond my ability to do, so I wouldn't know how to do that. You could just compare one site at a time, but then we get these multiple comparisons. So I want to leave it at there is a significant difference between these populations. Uh, between these sites on different days. Uh, or rather, within these sites on the same day. If you want to do the different days, you could compare that. So with that, that's it. That is how to make a stacked bar chart, a pie graph, and do a chi-square analysis. Um, I'd say like, subscribe, and comment, but this is going to be posted on Canvas. Uh, I think you guys can comment if you want. Uh, let me know if there are other JMP-type videos you want. 
Uh, I am becoming quickly a pro at making these, so see you next time.